propelled me to become a filmmaker is that I love storytelling. I love the art of storytelling. I love the emotional connection of storytelling. And I think that had a lot to do with why I became a musician is because there's this connection between what you're doing and other people. So I'll say an audience, but it, you know, it, I wasn't thinking of them as an audience. I was thinking of them as just a shared moment, right? You're connecting with, with other people, something that's, and sharing something that's important to you. And um, so that being a part of my nature led me to continue as a storyteller and become a filmmaker. Well, there's stuff you had to do. You got to buy cameras. You have to learn how to edit. You have to learn about lighting. You have to learn about audio. There's all of these things that you have to learn. But uh, you, I wasn't interested in just learning these things for their own sake. It was I had to find stories, the thing that was compelling me originally to share, then that would lead to my industriousness, right? That's what would pull me along to learn all the things that I needed to learn to get to the ultimate goal, and that was to be a storyteller. Now, some of you may have whatever your specific interest, interest is, a software, an app. That's the thing that's pulling you, you know, whatever it is that app does is the thing that compelled you to get started. You wanted to help people. You wanted to contribute. You wanted some connection with people. And that was the idea that you hit on that could be helpful to others. And that pull is what compels you to, to, to learn what you need to learn, to take that next step, to discover things that you had no idea were waiting for you, challenges that you never saw coming, but because your, your why was big enough to get you through the, you know, I can't do this moments. Um, so I had all of those things that I needed to learn. And the why was to tell stories. And because I was a musician and in the army, those were the things I really knew about that I could, I could tell stories about that I, I knew about. So I started doing that while in the band and using them. The band decided to use some of these presentations in their live performances. So you had a multimedia experience for the audience. So not only was the band playing, then my film is up on the screen as part of this live presentation. Um, I was doing that and archiving activities in the band. We went to China. I did a documentary uh, about that trip. It's called In China. Um, and so I was contributing, able to tell stories, learning new stuff all the time but doing it with things that I was familiar with and comfortable with because I had to get started. And like anybody, you know, they say, do what you do, stick with what you're good at. Do talk, talk about the things that you know about. I mean, I guess for a long time because of, I, I didn't know what I was doing as a filmmaker. So I would have had I, I honestly considered myself a hobbyist to begin with, but there was a moment uh, for me that uh, the light went off and I went, there's something I need to do. And I, I think that was the, the, the moment that a lot of us come to when you realize it's not just an idea, it's something that comes from inside you, a decision, you make a quality decision. This is something I need to do. And that was, I wanted to become a filmmaker. I, was, I am not a, a, a proponent of becoming a filmmaker as a career, as a, as a career choice. Um, I think it's like, like playing saxophone. Like I learned, I grew up playing music and then decided to do, continue doing what I loved and then had to figure out how to make money at it. All right. So then you start exploring the possibilities, uh, around you. So the same thing, I, I would say the same thing about becoming a videographer or a filmmaker. Uh, there's a long learning curve. Uh, there's a lot, uh, a lot of different areas that you have to explore in order to um, be successful at it, but also to be good at it. And you wanna be, you wanna learn how to do it right. And I'm sure everybody here that's got an idea that they wanna pursue, you know, you wanna do it right. You wanna do it uh, in a way that is respected and appreciated and also um, productive in a financial way for yourself. So it's, there's a lot of things that have to be balanced going forward.
um, and it, for for any of any of your choices as far as um, entrepreneurship. Um, the one thing that I uh, knew from my experience growing up uh, as a young musician that I was able to immediately do when I decided to uh, become a filmmaker, and that was to tie in to the community of people doing the same thing that I'm doing. Um, you, I had to, in order to be successful, I had to make contacts. Uh, I needed to um, connect with the, you know, the people that had the information immediately that I needed. So establishing good professional contacts, uh, open lines of communication, uh, demonstrating your, your sincerity and your seriousness and your willing to work, willingness to work with people is uh, those are all good characteristics of anybody that wants to be successful outside of, well, anywhere in life, of course. But if you're trying to do something on your own, you really need to, uh, to uh, market those characteristics to the people around you and in the community that you're interested in. Meetup.com, because it's, it's online, it's worldwide, and it's a system for finding groups of people that, are, that share your interest and you can actually meet up with them physically. And I guess, you know, nowadays we can start meeting them again physically, but uh, originally that's the idea. You, you meet and you have discussions and you just share ideas and connect and try to promote what it is you're doing. And hopefully that leads to collaboration and all of these things and for yourselves as well. Nothing gets done really in a vacuum. It's, it takes collaboration. Yeah. One particular aspect of filmmaking and videography, whether it's commercials or documentaries is gonna be your music. And you would think you've just met me, he's a musician, so he's got an edge. I'm not a composer. I'm not an arranger. I've written a few pieces in my life for special purposes. And I've even done a couple of small things for some of my videos. But when it comes down to it, if I've got a, if I've got a big project, uh, like in, in China or um, Victory Remembered, uh, Legacy of the Black Devils, I actually hired composers. It's what they do, it's what they love. So there's my collaboration with somebody else who is talented and, and um, I can't, I, it takes a career, it takes a lifetime to learn how to compose and to do it effectively, whether for live performance or for film. So I hired people for that. You, you don't wanna regret not doing it. You don't wanna regret yep. not taking that step or making that decision because you know, it's like, this is exciting to me. This is something I want to do. And even though I have no idea what I'm talking about, I at least have to take that first step to, uh, to bring that to life. Because I, I can't make a decision about it until I know more. I just knew that there was, a, there was something in me that compelled me to, to want to pursue that. I had a bike repair. I took my bike to this old repair shop here in Bowie, Maryland. There's this guy running this place and you, I walked in, he had bikes that were a hundred years old. I mean, and this place was stacked with bikes and gear and supplies and just, and it was an old building, total chaos. You walk in like, I, how do I, I, do I trust this guy to do business with me? This place is a mess. His shop was lit, like literally at the front door where he did all the repairs. But when I stood there looking at it, I'm like, this is eye candy. Everything in here is un unbelievable to look at. So I started talking to him and I learned that he had been, he'd had this business for like 40 years. Um, I had just gotten a new camera I said, listen, I have a camera that I want to start experimenting with. Can I bring it back here and just practice in this place? You've got so many things to look at that are like awesome and cool to look at. So let me work on this. He was very nice, uh, hospitable, and let me come back. In the course of shooting and talking to this guy, the idea came that <sighs> this guy was passionate about his bike shop. He had been passionate about bike repairs for 50 years. He'd owned this shop for 40 years. And it wasn't about impressing other people. And it wasn't about having the slickest shop or the biggest um, clientele list of all the, competing with other bike shops. He did this out of a love for cycling. That's how he got started. He loved to cycle. 
um, lived it and found a way of making a career and uh, uh, through bike repair and became passionate about collecting old bikes, getting them up and running, preserving them, sharing them with kids. He, was, he would take them down to the, to the mall in DC when the Smithsonian would have events and show them to people. So it became this lifelong passion for him. And I was pretty impressed and very moved by, by his connection to many things in life that he had discovered through his passion for bicycles. Okay, there's a couple of other people that I know who are, one's a musician who teaches kids who, uh, percussion music who otherwise might not be able to afford lessons or have opportunities to participate in musical organizations. He's a professional percussionist in town. It's his passion to reach out to these kids and provide these things for them and finding however else he can do it. I found another gentleman in my neighborhood who is a volunteer fireman. And I only found him because I was riding my bike through my neighborhood and saw that he had a fire truck parked in his driveway. This was an old 1935 fire truck. He was so passionate about being a fireman that when he found an opportunity to actually buy a fire truck to repair, he went for it. These are all people that are passionate. They had an idea that struck them, that compelled them to do something extraordinary or stay so focused with their lives uh, or focused with this particular idea in their life. And it manifests itself. This guy has these classes, he's teaching children. This guy's a fire engine that he is repairing. This guy has a bike shop that, that he lives through his activities there to help other people. So now I'm working on a documentary that's gonna feature those three people that I met in the course of about a month. And I'm calling it Defining Passion. Now, the title works is like, how do, do we define passion or do our passions define us? So I think as, as uh, people that are thinking in terms of creating something, being entrepreneurs, uh, recognizing that if you're passionate about it, that's going to take you a long way. Okay? Deciding on a niche, like you want to make weddings, you want to shoot weddings, do you want to do commercials, do you want to make tell uh, documentaries? There are things that you certainly have to narrow down your focus in order to accomplish those things. I got out and was making films and doing work. And, and when I got, a, <laughs> I got a, a, a telephone call from someone that said, I work at Arlington National Cemetery. I'm the video producer. I'm looking for someone to replace me <laughs> as the video producer at Arlington National Cemetery. They had seen my work on LinkedIn but they didn't know that I had been in the army band. There was no connection at all. They didn't choose me because I was in the army band and had been in Arlington Cemetery for 20 years. They just had seen that, that Bugler project and thought, well, this guy understands the army. He'd probably be good at this. So you never know what sort of doors are, 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 are gonna open, but I ended up working for Arlington Cemetery as a video producer for a couple of years. Really embracing those moments of breakthroughs and uh, recognizing that I know something I should have known, but, but didn't, but now I do. So that's great, that's cool. And I'm excited about that. And it happens every day. Still today, I, I, before this meeting, I learned two things online that I needed to know. So it's, a, it's an ongoing process. And I think you have to, and I'm sure everybody here gets it, your entrepreneurial spirit. Spirit, you, you have to take that next step and be asking, what do I do next? What do I do next? What do I do next? And be moving forward. Because you don't want to sit back on your heels and say, I can't do this. I don't know how to do this. Well, you just made the decision. You're not going to do it. 